Okay, this is a Max patch that I'm working on that does facial recognition and point tracking to control a pan tilt zoom camera so that it will follow a subject around. Now, as you can see right now, there's a green dot superimposed on this video uh, window here, this JIT P window. And that's what is being tracked right now. And if I move over to the right, the camera moves with me and then stops once I'm centered in the frame. Same with down and up. Uh, <clears throat> the way this works is first by uh, first it does facial recognition with the uh, JIT or sorry cv.jit.faces uh, object which is right here uh, sorry right there and uh, so that's right here and that uh, goes down and, and starts polling starts looking for faces in the video stream and polls the uh, the object every 50 milliseconds to ask how many detected faces there are and it has to get four consecutive uh, face detects above one uh, or above zero rather to um, to switch modes and once it detects four uh, four face detects which it does by grouping the, the messages into groups of four and then adding them together and then getting a value that's greater than or equal to four. Uh, so once that happens, then it switches modes, which down here it sends to the mode switch, the face count metro and the uh, matrix size. It starts off with a smaller size matrix because the face calculations are more optimized at a, at a lower res. Um, so then once uh, it switches modes, it switches over here to the point tracking. For, uh, it was going out that outlet, now it goes out this one into uh, cv.jit.track and changes the mode size, cv.jit.resize, changes that back to 320 to by 240, which is the uh, resolution that I'm grabbing frames from the camera at and uh, starts, doing face, uh, starts doing point tracking. Over here, uh, we start to look at uh, whether we need to reset the point tracking. Because the point tracking doesn't look for faces, sometimes the tracking point can get to the very edge of the screen and get pulled off your face. And uh, if that happens, it will just hover over at the edge of the screen. And so what I've done is done some logic that says if it gets over to the side, uh, either side for too long, um, it looks for 20, it looks at 25 poll, uh, data poles and at 25, uh, data poles, if 17 or greater of those data poles say that it's over at the side, it resets. Um, and then when it, when it resets, it not only switch it switches back to face connect it uh, face detect it switches the matrix to a lower resolution and starts the process over again uh, then uh, so um, then the next part of the patch is actual the moving of the thing so it, the uh, data comes out from the track object cv.jit.track over here and uh, gets split off into uh, the X values and the Y values. And the X values come through this gate and the Y values come through this gate. And they start off going out the first outlet of the gate, which comes down here and does some basic, uh, uh, some basic logic to say, are they inside a centering box? And meaning if the, uh, if the X value gets a below 120 or above 200, then it will 
go ahead and send move uh, it will go ahead and uh, send movement commands to pan left or right um, and if it's above if it's uh, below 80 pixels on the Y scale which of course would be the top of the screen because it does Y values backwards uh, then it would send a down command and if it was uh, above 160 pixels it would send an up command and uh, <clears throat> the way it does the logic is each one of these is get has a value so if uh, it's over here to the left and it is below that threshold it's going to send a one if it's above this threshold it's going to send a 10 if it's below this threshold it's going to send a 100 and if it's above this threshold it's going to send a 50 and i can use those values to to get conditions over here you can see if it's just one then it needs to move left if it's 10 it needs to move right 50 needs to move up 100 needs to move down 51 needs to move up and left 101 down and left 60 up and right and 110 down and right uh, so each of those gets sent to their own movement sub patch and in each of these movement sub patches it uh, first uh, sends the it, it changes the gate to the appropriate uh, to the appropriate uh, send up on those on those big nine uh, position gates that I showed you and then it sends the command to start moving in this case it would start moving left that's the command that gets sent out the serial port and uh, so then it starts moving left uh, and then it has to determine when to stop moving left and so that's done by these sub patches over here these move left stop or move right stop and so then what it does is it, it's looking here at the x uh, value and if it once it gets above the 120 uh, bounding box then it will go ahead and send the stop command which sometimes it misses it so that's why I'm sending it three times here so that sends the stop command out the uh, out the uh, serial object out and then it uh, and then it changes the gate uh, the move gate back to the first a uh, logic position over here uh, so that's basically how it works in a nutshell and if you want to see it track me around just watch so I'll try to not get the camera in front of my face whoops it lost me so here's a uh, here's a, a bug with the program is sometimes this pixel will get stuck on something else uh, right now I I have that there's no real uh, fix for it except for I can go back into face detect mode all right, now it's detected me and it's tracking a point on my forehead. So let's just take a look at the camera. So here's the camera. You can, oop. Come on, baby, what's wrong with you now? There you go, you can see it's moving me, it's following me around. And it usually works better than that. I think because the camera being in front of my face, it's messing up. But I'll try to edit a better version of this in.